Cox Communications is proud to bring you coverage of one of our community's signature events, the annual Veterans Day Parade in downtown Las Vegas. With your hosts, Casey Smith from Vegas PBS and local media personality, Brian Chan. The 2018 Las Vegas Veterans Day Parade and Your View Las Vegas is brought to you by Cox Communications, connecting you to your community. Good morning and welcome to downtown Las Vegas for the 2018 Veterans Day Parade. I'm Brian Chan along with Vegas PBS's Casey Smith. Casey, it's a little chilly out here, but that did not put a damper on people coming out to support the parade. The wind is biting just a bit, but there are literally thousands of people lining 4th Street right here, and it's a glorious day because we're honoring America's veterans as we should. And of course, kicking off our parade, you can hear the rumble. I can smell the gasoline, and of course, those mufflers are shooting right through my body. But I've got the Blue Knights Nevada making their way down. They're a law enforcement motorcycle club. It's a nonprofit fraternal organization consisting of active and retired law enforcement officers who enjoy riding motorcycles. They promote, by example, and any other acceptable means, safe use, operation, and enjoyment of motorcycles, and strive to develop a fraternal spirit between law enforcement personnel and the general public. A lot of flags flying here. Yeah, you can hear them revving up. They're coming near the stand here. This is the beginning of the parade, and of course, everybody's excited. It, it's, it's a wonderful day. Like, this is a little bit chilly, but the, it kind of warms the spirit of your heart to see all of the people paying homage, if you will, to uh, America's fighting men and women. It's great. And of course, you know, Veterans Day, always on the 11th of November. And it just, oh, now the Buffalo Soldiers looks like they're making their way. The Buffalo Soldiers Motorcycle Club is Las Vegas's, their mission is to keep the 9th and 10th Cavalry Buffalo, Buffalo Soldiers legacy alive. I'm already having trouble, Casey, with no, my tongue twisters. Okay. It is a little chilly up here. And we're gonna have the Las Vegas Sin City Riders too. Now they're bringing the colors, a group of equine enthusiasts from multiple communities in Southern Nevada that pro promote the Western way of life and equine activities. Well, the, just looking at the motorcycles though, we've got some really, really fine iron there. Okay, sounds good. I think it's always a great way to open up the parade. They, I mean, they're so loud and they make such an entrance. I mean, if you're gonna make an entrance on a parade, do it with the motorcycle. Then we had, I think we had about three different entries roll through and there were so many of them. I, I kind of, I couldn't figure out where one stopped and one started. Boy, they sure announce themselves, don't they? Yeah. But it is, it, it's a great way to start the parade because so many veterans do love the bikes. And presenting the colors today, the Las Vegas Sin City Riders. They're a group of equine enthusiasts from multiple communities around Southern Nevada. They promote the Western way of life, promote equine activities. And of course, Brian, you can't have a parade without horses. They're magnificent. It's pretty funny. We went from three entries of motorcycles to horses. I mean, you just can't get any different than that. But of course, how classic are these guys coming down, presenting the colors, presenting the flags. Those horses are gorgeous. Beautiful animals, yeah. it's. Uh, you know, part of the legacy of the Old West. And in Nevada, we, we still are the Wild West here in some some respects. And it, it does pay uh, pay homage, once again, I, I'm not gonna overuse that word, but to the legacy of uh, the Silver State. Everybody draped in flags and everything. That's mar marvelous. Oh, we've got a little pony. Yeah, everybody's got to get into an act. It's a, you know, <laughs> it's a family affair here. What's it say? <laughs> and it looks like right behind them, the Boulder City Mounted Posse. They're supporting the Boulder City Police Department's Mounted Unit and is under the advertisement of the Boulder City Police Department's Mounted Unit Officer. Boulder City Mounted Posse is comprised of volunteers that each bring their horsemanship skills and specific skill sets to work with the BCPD Mounted Unit to assist with public safety while creating public awareness about the unique attributes of horses. Horses do play a role in law enforcement. No doubt there's, there are times when you need a horse to get somewhere that their motorcycles and certainly squad cars can't get to. If you, and we talked about this earlier, Casey, if you've ever been on the strip during New Year's Eve, those horses play a very important part of uh, security down there. Here we go, the 300th Army Band, Hollywood Zone. It's, they're from Southern California. It's the only Army Reserve Band in Southern California and serves the 
American Southwest Region, and the 63rd Regional Support Command. Under the direction of Chief Warrant Officer 2, Jeff Smith, the band travels coast to coast and internationally, performing a wide variety of settings. Let's give them a listen here. the Goodmans in that classic pink Cadillac. Mayor Carolyn Goodman, former Mayor Oscar Goodman, to the annual Veterans Day Parade. Mayor Goodmans are being escorted by Vegas's Elvis, Jesse Guerin, and his pink Cadillac. Now, I gotta say something, Casey, about the Goodmans. They know how to make an entrance. They certainly do, but I've got a question. Where's the showgirls? There aren't you know, showgirls. That's, a, that, that's the quintessential Mayor Oscar Goodman appearance. Usually it has his showgirls, but, and I'm looking for the Elvis. It looks like we've got... El Elvis, there, Elvis, there Elvis. he is. Elvis is in the passenger seat. Now I see him. And here we go. The city of Las Vegas proudly represented by Big Red, a 64 Seagrave ladder truck. That is a beautiful machine. Um, it's uh, Big Red served on active duty until 1988, fought many historic fires, including the MGM Grand Hotel fire. Woo. Riding on Big Red this year, please welcome Ward 5 Councilman Cedric Cryer. Uh, Ward 4 Councilman Stavros Anthony, Ward 6 Councilwoman Michelle Fiore, and Ward 2 Councilman Steve Soroka. And of course, Las Vegas Fire and Rescue number one, making the parade too. Well, let's see, we had the horses, we've got uh, the mayor, we've got the marching band. Now I feel like it's a Veterans Day parade. I mean, we have officially kicked this thing off. There goes Big Red. We've seen him in several parades throughout the year here in downtown Las Vegas. Two vets riding, Gloria Saucier, who is a World War II veteran. She served in the U.S. Marine Corps from 1944 to 1946. She was an air aircraft excuse me, controller during her time in the military. And John Vasilchin, who served, and I hope I didn't butcher his name, served 22 years in the U.S. Air Force, serving as a pilot of the F-86 Sabre during the Korean War and as an F-4 Phantom pilot during Vietnam. Seen some action there. And it looks like right behind them, the Military Order of the Purple Heart. These are servicemen and women who are wounded or killed in combat, and they're presented the Purple Heart Medal, which is the oldest and most recognizable military valid decoration. It was created by General George Washington in 1782, and the patriots of the Military Order of the Purple Heart promote patriotism, support necessary legislative initiatives, and most importantly, provide service to all veterans and their families. The state of Nevada has proclaimed itself a Purple Heart state. As we should, because those veterans should be honored very, very highly. I mean, it's, God bless them for going to war for us, you know, and doing, and in peacetime, but to, to be wounded, that is something that is just, you know, that they deserve any accolade they can give. I feel like there's a lot of medals that you can be bestowed, but I, I feel like the Purple Heart is one of the most recognizable. Everybody's, the crowd is really reacting to all of the veterans, it's great. They've got their flags out. We've been told that 10,000 flags have been passed out to our crowd today, and of course they're waving those proudly as the entries walk by. Looks like Chapter 711 just took a cruise by. Yeah, the America. American Ex-Prisoner of War organization consists of POWs from World War II, Korean conflict, the Vietnam conflict, and subsequent conflicts. They spent months to years in enemy prisons under conditions that, you know, they were poorly fed, they were poorly housed, oftentimes they were tortured, unfortunately, starved. They believe that the prisoner sacrifices should not be forgotten. Amen. The oldest member, a POW from World War II, is 102. He's here today. The motto for their organization is, quote, we help those that cannot help themselves. I think that's the second pass of this helicopter making its way over the crowd. Every time they go by, that crowd, the, the flags go up and they start cheering and they start waving. Yeah, Nellis providing flyovers for us. Crowd loves it, yeah. 
Uh, that, that's a Rolls Royce, and I believe it's a Silver Ghost. A Silver Ghost? It looks like we've got the Las Vegas Emerald Society Police and Fireman. Ah, bagpipes. Magnificent instruments, hard to play, very difficult to play. You know, the British used them before there was an America, and uh, a lot of people said when they heard the bagpipes, they'd turn and run. Very, very ominous. This society of pipes and drums is comprised of police, fire, first responders, and veterans. Well done, gentlemen. Sounds great. American Legion Post 10 from Las Vegas. Peter Gunn Post number 10, organized 38 years ago here in Las Vegas in 1980. During the years, Post 10 has been involved as an integral and viable part of the community. All members of the American Legion are veterans who fought on American and foreign soil to keep America and all her citizens safe. Legionnaires have nearly two million members these days, making it the largest wartime veteran service organization. American Legion serves our country and communities by assisting disabled veterans, homeless veterans, and all forgotten soldiers and their extended displaced families. This is just one of many, many posts we'll see throughout this parade. Hello there, young man. And you know, <laughs> the entourage here with uh, you know, the, the old Cadillac mixed with the new Cadillac, and it's just, <laughs> just a marvelous display of uh, history both human and <laughs> mechanical. <laughs> now, you said they've got nearly 2 million members, Casey, but of course, all of these cars are part of the American Legion Post 10. They're going to make their way down, taking their time to wave to the crowd. Happy Veterans Day, everybody. You know, Brian, I'd have to say, those three cars right there, probably made before you were born. 1960, okay, there we go. Let's check out the license plate. I'll tell you exactly <laughs> when it was born. <laughs> there. I believe some of these cars are part of the Cadillac Cars Club, Casey. Ah. Just reading license plates. Boy, they are they are just wonderful, aren't they? Yep, there's a 75. Okay, we're sneaking in a, a later model here. That's a, that's a shiny piece of iron. Looks more like the Batmobile. <laughs> yeah, we do try to get these uh, these entries in order, but um, every once in a while we miss a step. And it looks like we've got the American Legion Auxiliary LD Lockhart 14. This is part of the Legion family whose mission is known for their dedication to our military veterans, families, and survivors. Now, during the 2018 National Convention, this unit received honors for junior member and senior unit member, plus Americanism Essay Contest winner of the year. We're also proud of our Miss Poppies <laughs> and the work they do for our veterans. Ah, they're having a good time here. Ah, stay warm, my friends. Every once in a while, as you can probably hear in the microphones, the wind comes through a, just a little bit. And it blows right through my sweater. <laughs> the Vietnam veterans of Ventura County, California, we welcome you. And, we, and, and our hearts go out to uh, everyone in Northern and Southern California dealing with all the fires right now in the region. This is their 14th year participating in the parade. You know, they've been here through most of the parades then because I believe this parade has been going for 23 years here in Las Vegas. That's right, 23 years. Our Veterans uh, Action Group puts on this parade for us. And of course, today it actually fell on 11-11, which, right. you know, like you said, the 11th, what would you say, Casey, the 11th hour of the 11th month Eleventh hour of the eleventh day, day of the eleventh, eleventh month, month, when correct. the armistice was signed in 1918, uh, ending World War One, the war to end all wars, which of course that's what it was called at the time, and <laughs> it didn't ring true uh, after we got into World War Two and then some subsequent ones, but uh, it was a great day for the world nonetheless. And we've got the Vietnam Veterans of America, Chapter 1076. 
These guys are located in Henderson and, and have been in existence since 2012. It prides itself on the motto of veterans helping veterans. To name a few, they fund four service dogs annually for returning vets, provide funding for veterans transitioning counseling, and coordinate mentorship for returning veterans at the Veterans Court in Henderson. We should mention those animals coming back to are veterans. You know, there are a lot, yep. lot of dogs that, that are used uh, in conflicts around the world today. And, uh, you know, they come back and often reunited with their quote-unquote handlers, but they, they become their owners and part of the family when they get back here in the States. Just marvelous what they do with those animals. Chapter 1076 of the Vietnam Veterans. A lot of flag waving. <laughs> Warms the heart. Warms the heart. Hey, the Jewish War Veterans Department of Nevada is here. Jewish War Veterans of the United States Department of Nevada. This group includes former members of the military who served in all branches and all wars. They get to bring their families along. I love how the parade and, of course, you know, the we see lots of families, we see lots of pets, people have come out. We have lots of people that travel far and wide just to come here mm -hmm. and what has been billed as the biggest Veterans Day parade west of the Mississippi. So of course, everybody on the west coast now has made their way to Las Vegas to check out today's parade. Yeah, we're, we're expecting some 10,000 people here, approximately, and uh, to, to, to view the parade as we watch the Daughters of American Revolution come by. Now, this is a women's service organization dedicated to promoting patriotism, historic preservation, and education. Today's participants are members of the Southern Nevada chapters of DAR, children of the American Revolution, and sons of the American Revolution. Volunteering thousands of hours to our veterans, they say thank you to all those who have served and are currently serving in our armed forces. Huge service organization based out of Washington, D.C. Yeah. Now, any woman, 18 or older, regardless of race, religion, or ethnic background, as long as they can provide lineal descent, you know, that they are a from a patriot of the American Revolution, they are eligible to join. And if they've got a yellow Volkswagen, all the better. <laughs> now, this big vehicle is the AUSA John C. Fremont Chapter 6402. The Association of the United States of America, excuse me, United States Army was founded in July 1950. <laughs> to support the soldier and army families. The association has its principal objectives, educating the public, force modernization, support the soldier, and professional development. Man, these guys want to make sure that they know they're coming down. I love the horn. That is the Nevada State Veterans Home, it oh, looks it like. Oh, you're right. The activity department at the Veterans Homes in Boulder City has been bringing their World War II, Korean, and Vietnam veterans to this parade for almost 12 years, Casey. They really feel special when they can participate in this parade as they get emotional and realize they are not forgotten. It's also very emotional for the staff as well and for us up here on the dais. Looks like we've got the disabled American veterans making their way down. Bless them, too. They have quite a network with a long working relationship with the VA and the medical centers across the nation providing transportation to vets in need. A lot of people need just transportation to and from to obtain their medical care. The network provides services throughout Southern Nevada. From August 2017 to 2018, DAV volunteers transported 5,574 veterans. And here comes Company B 4th of the 3rd, 11th Infantry Brigade, American Division. All of these combat veterans served together in the jungles and rice paddies of Vietnam. This unit is part of the Old Guard, which guards the tomb of the unknown soldier, nation's capital. This band of brothers have come to Las Vegas Veterans Parade from as far away as Massachusetts, Delaware, Minnesota, and Texas. Welcome, gentlemen. See, they're still tough. They're still wearing shorts. Man, I don't know how they are doing that right now. I'm telling you. <laughs> they're tough. That is a group of gentlemen who paid their dues. They certainly did. And paid dues for all of us. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank every, every single service personnel member who, who served this country. Thank you very much. We can have parades like this and, and debates and parties and everything because of these people. 
Now, this little boat is part of the USGC Auxiliary. It's a group of dedicated volunteers that promote and teach safe boating education classes throughout the Las Vegas area. Look how cute the, <laughs> the kids are going crazy every time it passes by. I'm wondering how that's... Somebody must have a remote control. No, it's got, it's got, it's got eyes. It okay. What it's, it's, what it's doing. There you go. Speaking of boats, that's a nice one, too. Uh, this is the third year that your local USCG Auxiliary units have been privileged to be a part of this annual event, and they are proud to honor those veterans that have served our country. Young men and women, the RTC. U.S. Vets, Las Vegas, serving as the largest nonprofit that supports homeless and at risk veterans. U.S. Vets of Las Vegas operates three locations in the Valley including over 330 beds of transitional and permanent housing for our veterans. Employment services help over 110 veterans return to employment, and over 400 veteran households are provided with rapid rehousing and homeless prevention services annually. Now, I've seen some kids earlier in the parade route in the cars. I think this is one of the first walking entries that I've seen pets some kids, some families making their way down, all part of the U.S. Vets. Their mission, unfortunately, is, is so vital. It's unfortunate because there's a need for it, but they, they, they do it so well, and they, it's all about the heart. It's all about the heart. Unfortunately, we do have a lot of homeless veterans in this community, yeah. and, and it's, it's, it's good to see such a large turnout of U.S. Vets here for the parade because the work they do is so vital and, and so so crucial to the community. And that looks like Dina Titus leading mm -hmm. the Nevada Paralyzed Veterans of America. This chapter was formed in 1999 and is dedicated to improving the lives of our veterans living with paralysis through education, location of resources, medical research, physical and psychological therapy, and wheelchair athletic programs. Dina Titus sporting the colors today on Veterans Day. Yeah. Congratulations, Dina. Paralyzed Veterans of America. Some more individuals that have really paid their dues. And then the Vietnam Combat Veterans. Speaking of paying your dues, the Vietnam Combat Veterans say they would like to commend your honorable patriotism for showing up today, showing your support because it is people like you, they say, that have made their remaining lives so memorable. The Vietnam War is a distant memory behind them and all of us. However, they appreciate you approaching them to thank them for their service. When you recognize the pride they take in wearing their caps and shirts, please keep up the kindness and appreciation. And, you know, just walking around, let's say in a grocery store, oftentimes you'll see a veteran with a cap like that. And it's a great idea to go up and shake their hand and thank them because they've endured hardships that some of us can only imagine. And right behind them is the Filipino Veterans Group Incorporated. The Phil Vets Group are veterans of the U.S. Armed Forces who served Vietnam. Gulf Wars, and other conflicts. Their mission is to educate their members about current benefits and advocate on behalf of veterans, their dependents, and survivors. Looks like we've got some American ex-prisoners of war riding in some of these cars, making their way down the parade route. Uh -huh. That is a beautiful automobile. Looks like we have Miss Senior Asia in Las Vegas. Along with Bert Stevens, who is a Korean War veteran, 90 years old. 90 years young, we should say. <laughs> All right, the Vet Center of Southern Nevada. They provide readjustment assistance, resource connections, and counseling services for active duty personnel, veterans, and their families. Vet Centers provide services on a flexible, expedient basis. A lot of those mo mobile units you see around town, around the valley here, and they're very, very, very critical to some of the veteran services we have here. The Blue Star Mothers of Henderson and Boulder City, 
Blue Star Mothers of America Incorporated are military mothers serving U.S. military and veterans since 1942. They support active duty deployed for the holidays, families of our fallen heroes, and veterans in Southern Nevada. Blue Star Mothers' mission is to support through service. Military moms and military family members are welcome to join their chapter. And oftentimes the mothers are the ones who are forgotten because the men and women go off to fight or, or do what they have to do. And the mothers are the ones uh, staying home, praying, you know, lighting the candles and, and really being just as much part of the operation as, as they are. I was just about to say, Casey, I mean, we're, we're definitely recognizing our veterans, but, you know, another part or the other side of people going off to war is obviously the families yeah, that are affected by that. And a lot of them, you know, are third, fourth, fifth, tenth generation military. Yeah. I mean, it's their, 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 the call of their family is to serve. And it's, it's a marvelous thing to see. And it's why it, you know, events like this are so critical and so wonderful. And we'll have lots more from the 2018 Veterans Day Parade when we come back. Las Vegas isn't just a city where we work, it's the community where we live. And at Cox Communications, we know that giving back to our community makes Southern Nevada stronger. That's why our Cox Charities Las Vegas initiative is committed to awarding hundreds of thousands of dollars in grants to local nonprofits each year. We're proud to be a part of the fabric of this community. Together, we're making Las Vegas a better place to live. For more information or to apply for the next grant cycle, please visit coxcharitieslv.com. We're Imagine Dragons. I'm Tom Coughlin. And we're Joe and Jill Biden. Every day, 43 children are diagnosed with cancer in the United States. This leaves a devastating emotional and financial impact on the entire family. It takes a band. It takes a team. It takes a community. It takes a nation to tackle pediatric cancer. Join the Tyler Robinson Foundation, the Biden Cancer Initiative, and the Tom Coughlin J Fund in supporting the many families tackling childhood cancer. We are here to be a safe haven for women and children in crisis. We help women who are homeless for whatever reason. At full capacity, over 5,000 women and children come to the Shade Tree for services every year. Every day, the Shade Tree changes people's lives. Our group TAPS sends a professional in to perform the most meaningful and honoring part of the ceremony outside of the flag folding. It's just very, very much more personal when it's a live trumpet player. Real people playing beautiful, pure tones is amazing. It felt very, very special to have that there live. That is America saying thank you. We are back, the Veterans Parade uh, for 2018, Las Vegas. We're going down 4th Street. We're right 4th in Carson. Thank you for joining us. My name is Casey Smith. I'm joined by Mr. Brian Chan, who is uh, a veteran of these parades. Too. <laughs> <laughs> well, Casey, I mean, you've done several yourself, and of course, it's good to be back. A little chilly downtown, but it has not dampened the spirits of anybody that came down. The flags are waving there. I mean, I, th I would say, I don't know, we're we about a third that. of the way. We I know, let me get into the spirit of everything right. and wave the flag. About 10,000 of these have been handed out to the parade uh, participants as well as the people that have came to sit on this curb and watch these entries go by. And you know, you talk about how chilly it is, but the crowd is growing. The crowd has yep. grown since we've been here since about 8.30 and uh, it's uh, we're approaching the midway point of the parade and the crowd just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And of course, Wells Fargo and that classic stagecoach. You know, the horses might be the only ones that are actually warm right now. <laughs> I could be wrong. <laughs> I could be wrong. Now, for 150 years, stagecoaches were the fastest technology of their day and traveled great distances to connect people and communities. Today, Wells Fargo is still moving forward, using innovation and technology to deliver financial services to customers wherever they may be. Their worldwide military banking serves veterans and active duty troops around the globe. Well, they got a lot of employees that have come out to celebrate, too. A lot, a lot of them are active military or, or friends, family of active military, but a lot of them are just employees coming on out. We have a celebrity in our midst now. We are joined by Las Vegas City Councilman Ward 2, Steve Soroka. It's great to be here. Thank you again. 
Now, Steve, we saw you go by on Big Red, so you made it all the way down to the end of the parade route and came all the way back to talk to us, right? Absolutely. <laughs> this is why I'm here for, you, for all of us here today, so thanks. What yeah. does Veterans Day mean to you? you no, know, Veterans Day is a real special day, and it's an opportunity, especially at this time in our community, where there's a big divide between the military and the civilian community, since in the last generation of about 26 years, only 2% of Americans have even worn the uniform. So it's a great opportunity for us to, to come out and show the community that there are veterans here, and it's also a chance to say thank you for the many veterans organizations we have in town. Well said, well said. Uh, this is quite a turnout. It's a, you know, I understand this to be the largest Veterans Day parade west of the Mississippi River. <laughs> that is correct. That's right. We can't compete with the East Coasters, but we've got the West Coast batting down. We got it covered out here in Vegas, and only in Vegas, right? Got to <laughs> love it here in Vegas. And we do have some great veterans organizations. You'll see many of them come by, and we have our USO, Forgotten Not Gone. It goes, the list goes on and on. And I was great. I was happy to see uh, some. Uh, organizations from California yes. that came out yep. here to support us as well. One of the funnest things I remember from the past is our rock junior ROTC teams that come by and perform doing their uh, military drill, and they are exceptional performers. So we do have a great veteran support community here, but we can always do better. We can always do better. <laughs> Let's remember those veterans. Definitely, but truth be told, this is a military town. Yeah. It really is with Nellis, and you know, it, a lot of people here, are, are they have deep roots in the military. They, great to see. They do. We have about, uh, estimates are approximately 300,000 veterans in the state of Nevada. So that's about 10, a little over 10% of the population. Yeah. So we do have a large veteran uh, group here. The, the younger veterans are a little smaller representation. We do have a large guard and reserve presence here as well. We have about 7,500 guards, guardsmen and reservists that complement about 10,000 that are on Nellis and Creech Air Force Base. And did you know that Nellis and Creech bring in about $5 billion of revenue to Southern Nevada? Did not know that, did yeah. not know that. The parade is going behind us and I, these oh. entries keep going about. Thank you so much for joining us. It looks like MGM Resort's coming right behind us and thank we you love for making MGM your way back. Big sport. Thanks for being here. Thank you. You're giving me a Veteran chance yourself, say. right? I am a 30-year Air Force uh, fighter pilot. Need to mention that. Retired out of Nellis. Thank you, sir. And thank it's you, great sir. to serve the community on the city council, so thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Thanks very thank much you. for coming up. And, of course, that entry going by, MGM Resorts. But right behind them, Cox Communications. It's the third largest cable provider in the United States and has received numerous awards and recognitions for its industry-leading diversity initiatives and its local community programs. Nearly 100 employees, friends, and family members of the Cox Communications Southwest region proudly salute a veteran by marching in their honor. Cox Communications would like to thank our Cox Veterans Day champion, Matt Neal, and our Cox Veterans Day parade captains, Abe Rodriguez, Terry Paul, Mark Underwood, and Rico White for their countless hours in preparation for our Veterans Day events. For Veterans Day parade broadcast information, visit your view, yurview.com. Whether it be a parent, spouse, sibling, family member, or friend, on behalf of Cox Communications, we salute you once again. That website, yurview.com. We're joined now with, by Matt Neal from Cox Communications. Matt, thank you very much for coming on up. Great production. Thanks for having us here. Uh, we love being here. Cox has 1,500 employees in Las Vegas, uh, huge supporters of veterans, and it, we're excited every year that we get to be a part of this. Now, that was the first big flag that I've seen go down the parade route. I mean, how many people do you have here representing Cox? We have close to 80 people here representing. Fantastic. Yep, absolutely. With well, that many people, can you stop the wind? What's that? <laughs> Can you stop the wind? I wish we could. <laughs> no, it's it's a great event, and it, it's it's wonderful that every year Cox comes out, uh, broadcasts the parade. Uh, it it really is something that it's part of the fiber of Southern Nevada. Absolutely. We thank you yeah. very very much. Thank you so much for having us. Great, Matt. Thanks for having thank us. Thank you. And we've got Caesars Entertainment. Caesars Entertainment Enlisting Heroes Program provides job opportunities for U.S. military veterans and their spouses across all of Caesars Entertainment's resorts. At its foundation, Caesars Enlisting Heroes seeks to harness the skills and aptitudes veterans acquire throughout their military career and apply them to the business world. And as you can see, it's a family affair. We've got uh, Caesars employees, their families. I've, I've seen, seen a couple strollers. dogs. You know, <laughs> not that dogs aren't family. Dogs are totally family. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's and right time. behind them, we've got the Cimarron High School, the AFJROTC Band and Student Council. 
Now this Air Force Junior ROTC and Marching Band and the Student Council are 170 members strong, and they are the Blackjack Wing, and 80 members of the Marching Band are here today. This is just one of many ROTC units we're gonna see throughout this parade as the band approaches. Let's take a listen to the band too. Cimarron High School Marching Band. Oh. You know, as a former participant in band, it's not always easy to move your hands and uh, keep your lips warm enough to play in this weather. <laughs> I'll tell you what. And it looks like the Civil Air Patrol is making their way down here. Their mission is to support America's communities with emergency response, diverse aviation and ground services, youth development, and promotion of air, space, and cyber power. Let's not forget the C. Let's not forget the C. The U.S. Naval Sea Cadets. The U.S. Naval Sea Cadets is a federally chartered nonprofit youth organization for young people ages 10 through high school. The wearing of the Navy uniform and hands-on exciting training aboard Navy and Coast Guard ships and shore stations make them very unique. USNSCC engenders among its participants the value of an alcohol-free, drug-free, and gang-free lifestyle. The program provides cadets with not only the motivation and encouragement to pursue their goals, also assistance in achieving them. Looks like behind them we've got the Liberty High School Air Force JROTC. These are the Liberty High School Patriots Air Force. The military bearing is amazing in this group. This color guy we're looking at here from Liberty, not moving a muscle. Now, now Casey, you had talked about it earlier, and I think I think I cut you off when the the marching band was going by. But you have you've choreographed several of these in your. History. I mean, this is part of your resume, correct? In one of my past lives, yes. Yes, I was involved, uh, very involved with the drum and bugle corps activity and marching bands. I used to teach a lot of them. And it's it's, it's no small task to uh, get your chops up in weather like this, believe me. So you know the amount of job. hours of practice and rehearsals it takes to get several, just to get to this point? Several hours a day, actually. No, it's, it's uh, it, and it's a great activity, uh, just speaking for high school marching band, let's say, it's, it's, a, it's a team that everybody participates on. Nobody rides the bench, yep. and it, it's really a great uh, character-building experience, if nothing else. Uh, the, these young people put a lot of uh, blood, sweat, and tears into what they do. I can only imagine. As they do with the RTC. You know, th this is, it's, uh, th they call it extracurricular, but it's, it becomes a lifestyle. And looks like the Girl Scouts of Southern Nevada, they're proud to be here today honoring the courageous men and women who have served our country. Now the Girl Scouts, of course, most people know them for their badges and for camping and selling the Girl Scout cookies, but I mean, it's such, it is the, it is the largest girls leadership organization in the world. Somebody say Thin Mints? <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. I actually prefer those Samoas, those Do coconut, okay. ones, coconut oh, no. chocolate. Thin Mints, you freeze them, oh, beautiful. Now, the Girl Scouts, thanks for participating. And they, they too, serve such a vital, vital interest here in, the, in America. Yeah, they do a lot of work mm -hmm. in the community. They really build uh, character and courage and charisma amongst young women in the United States.
The Southern Nevada Vehicle Military Association, a local club made up of individuals dedicated to the preservation, as you can see, the restoration and display of military vehicles. That's some old iron right there. These ve vehicles represent many historical eras and countries. The club is also an affiliate member of the National and International Military Vehicle Preservation Association. The MVPA has chapters in 38 states, 12 countries. Owning a military vehicle is not required for membership. So there you go, Brian. All you have to do is jump on that Jeep. Yeah, some of those... <laughs> <laughs> Some of those vehicles served, served tours of duty long before I was born. But I mean, man, they're still ago. running, and you could just tell that thing is a tank. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, when you think about it, I mean, these, these vehicles went into war zones, too. Yeah. You know, and, and they, they can be uh, <laughs> destroyed and rebuilt many, many times within a year. Well, they were built to last, and they're here yeah. 2018, traveling down downtown Las Vegas. It's part of our Veterans Day Parade. Thank you, sir. Quite an impressive sight. Quite an impressive sight. Oh, so we've got a Vegas Strong on the uh -huh. bumper of one of those cars. Proud to represent Las Vegas. <laughs> Nellie Bell. Yeah, our producer makes a good point. Where do they keep these? Where, 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 do you, where do you store vehicles like this? Because you got to know that people are going to be very curious and want to climb on them whenever they see them. So they, they must store them in, in either garages or backyards. But I mean, Casey, I'm looking at the height of those wheels. I mean, there's no way that thing wouldn't fit into my garage. Would that fit into yours? Yeah, those aren't built for comfort or for speed. And no, they would not fit in my garage. No way. They could probably destroy my garage <laughs> if I tried to pull it in. <laughs> but it's, oh, boy. Magnificent machines. And we'll be right back here in downtown Las Vegas with more from the 2018 Veterans Day Parade when we come back. Please stay with us. We're Imagine Dragons. I'm Tom Coughlin. And we're Joe and Jill Biden. Every day, 43 children are diagnosed with cancer in the United States. This leaves a devastating emotional and financial impact on the entire family. It takes a band. It takes a team. It takes a community. It takes a nation to tackle pediatric cancer. Join the Tyler Robinson Foundation, the Biden Cancer Initiative, and the Tom Coughlin J Fund in supporting the many families tackling childhood cancer. We are here to be a safe haven for women and children in crisis. We help women who are homeless for whatever reason. At full capacity, over 5,000 women and children come to the Shade Tree for services every year. Every day, the shade tree changes people's lives. Our group TAPS sends a professional in to perform the most meaningful and honoring part of the ceremony outside of the flag folding. It's just very, very much more personal when it's a live trumpet player. Real people playing beautiful, pure tones is amazing. It felt very, very special to have that there live. That is America saying thank you. Las Vegas isn't just a city where we work, it's the community where we live. And at Cox Communications, we know that giving back to our community makes Southern Nevada stronger. That's why our Cox Charities Las Vegas initiative is committed to awarding hundreds of thousands of dollars in grants to local nonprofits each year. We're proud to be a part of the fabric of this community. Together, we're making Las Vegas a better place to live. For more information or to apply for the next grant cycle, please visit coxcharitieslv.com. We are back. Happy Veterans Day. It was 100 years ago today, once again, on the 11th hour, the 11th day of the 11th month, that they signed the armistice that ended World War I. And here we are celebrating America's veterans and, more precisely, Southern Nevada's veterans. 
And it looks like we've got the Southern Nevada Living History Association making their way down the parade route. Now, these guys salute the veterans of the United States Armed Forces and thanks them for preserving our freedom and defending others from tyranny. Those armed services, armed forces, I should say, long time ago, the last century, two centuries ago, more ROTC, which is great to see. Yeah, this is El Dorado High School, and they've won the Best Distinguished Unit Award three years in a row. Of course, right behind them, we've got Rancho High School, Air Force Junior ROTC. Now, this is the NV-31, the oldest and largest Air Force Junior ROTC unit in all of Nevada, established in 1968. Rancho's unit celebrated its 50th anniversary last year and steps into its second half century of excellence in 2018. Boasting more than 300 cadets, the unit emphasizes leadership, teamwork, fitness, and patriotism. These young people exemplify discipline. Watch this. <laughs> Very good. Very Look good. At that. Yeah. That is sharp. That is hours of practice, too. Good for them. You know, Casey, in a former life, I was in a boy band. And our choreographer used to say when he was teaching us choreography, if at any point in time I took a picture, everybody should look exactly the same. I, I guarantee you, if, I, if we took a freeze frame at any point in time of that performance, they would have all been completely in sync. Well, i tell you what, you're right. And as, as a former uh, teacher of these types of things, it, it does get down to music in a way. It's all about tempo. Yeah. It's all about tempo. And they've, they've got great inner tempo, which is an inner discipline. And uh, they do very well. Of course, here come the rifles. On behalf of Rancho High School, Those aren't toys. Those are heavy. These young people know what they're doing. So, so impressive. Very well done. Very well done. Bravo, Rancho. Bravo. I must say, Rancho has quite a contingent, don't they? Well, yeah, they are the largest Air Force Junior ROTC in all of Nevada. They have over 300 cadets with us here today. You know, Casey, you mentioned something about inner rhythm. It's one thing to do this when you've got a, a marching band or some music or some, or some tempo. It's another thing when you have to have that internal That's rhythm right. inside and be in sync with everybody. Yeah, you, you take your tempo from the commands, and you're, then you're on your own. Yeah. And they do it well. They do it well. One of the most impressive things is how many of them there are. I mean, the, the, clearly the, the, the group is well led because uh, they've got quite a following. Rancho High School, one of the older high schools here in town. Yeah. They've been at this a long time. And they're doing it in shirt sleeves. <laughs> the rest of us are freezing. <laughs> no, I don't know. The Good people kids. that are watching at home, you probably notice little by little, I've added another layer yep. and another layer and another layer. And I tried to come out here. I thought I was going to be brave. But, you know, you're from Wyoming. I'm from California. So, you know, I have a very, uh, very thin skin on these things. Oh, I've been here for 18 years. I, you, your, your blood thins out. Your blood thins out. But not these kids. They're, they're tough. So are you. I, I've had this on the whole time. <laughs> Casey, how many years did you uh, choreograph marching bands? Oh, dear. Uh, oh, 
15, something. I don't know. You know, that's good. Part. I, I grew up in a drum and bugle corps from Casper, Wyoming, called the Troopers, the Casper Troopers. We, uh, oh. we were national champions, and uh, we spent long, long hours. And, it, you know, some people ran as far away from it as they could after <laughs> they got too old. <laughs> but I was one of the crazy ones that stuck with it for a while, and it's, it just gets in your blood. And it, it's, it's a lot like what you're seeing now. There's participation, young people participating to achieve a common goal, whether it's musical performance, military performance, uh, which is what this is, is, is military performance. And uh, it, gets, it gets under your skin. And, then, and it's great to see so many young people from Rancho participate. Looks like we've got the Order of the Delians making their way down. Fight or flight number 62, the Fraternity of Military Aviators, founded in 1934. World War I aviators. Wow. Right behind them, it's the Red River Valley Fighter Pilots Association. These guys were founded as an organization of fighter pilots to commemorate strong spirit of corpse and an unprecedented sacrifice as demonstrated by American fighting men during the campaign over North Vietnam. They continue to share the camaraderie of fellow aviators and provide scholarship assistance to dependents of lost military service aircrew personnel. Yeah, this is Dale Bailey, Marine Corps veteran. Dale was in the Marine Corps from 1976 to 1988. Thank you very much for your service, sir. Not only that, he gets to drive a flashy car and wave the flag. Proudly wave that flag. Yep. Well. You can, you, listen, you can't miss them. There it is, <laughs> the wild, that huge nice. wildcat. We've got nice. the Las Vegas High School Alumni Association. Now, the eight-foot-tall wildcat was designed and built by LVHS alumni volunteers from classes of 1954 to 2009. Las Vegas is the oldest high school in Las Vegas, and many prominent Las Vegans graduated from this school. Now, this year, they're honored to have the U.S. Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Adam Flood and his family riding with them on the float. Colonel Flood spent 22 years in active duty, and he just returned home from his last deployment. Welcome back, Colonel Flood. Once a wildcat, always a wildcat. Always cat. a wildcat, that's right. That's great. Now, the Alumni Association sponsors annual scholarships for students of LVHS and holds an annual wildcat reunion for all LVHS alumni. They're happy to have the LVHS cheerleaders join them today. So who gets the honor of riding on the Wildcat? That young man's having a good time. <laughs> Navy Federal Credit Union here, ready to serve wherever life takes you. They do a lot of uh, financial work for, for veterans. Great organization. And here come the Cub Scouts. Were you ever a Cub Scout? I, you know what? I was not. I was not. Were you? Yes. Yes. Did you go graduate on to Boy Scouts? No, I did not. No, I did not. And that's when the Drum and Beagle Corps bug hit me. So. <laughs> and here we have NB941, the Air Force Junior ROTC from Durango High School. Established in 1994, this program has over 200 cadets and is the only junior ROTC program inducted into the CCSD Board of Education Hall of Fame. Well done. NV941 is the eight-time Clark County School District and 20-time All-Air Force State Champions in Drill and the 2018 Golden Bear West Coast Drill Champions. We're going to get a taste of that right now. All these young people from Durango High School. 
Casey, I watched something like this, and just somebody as clumsy as I am, I wonder if I would ever survive the ROTC if I joined. Well, you've seen those movies with all those drill sergeants? Oh, you'd survive. <laughs> or you wouldn't. <laughs> no, you'd be fine, Brian. <laughs> And right behind these guys, we have Miss Senior USA, the Seniors Pageant Group, and the Ms. Senior USA Pageant celebrates and honors the lives and achievements of women and women's veterans over 60. Here today is Nicole Duffel, the newly crowned Miss Senior United States. Welcome, Nicole. And right behind Nicole is Guzman Ohana, Miss Liberty. Miss Liberty is a 2013 ZL1 Camaro is riding in, with uh, whose designed wrap was created by Melanie Guzman, wife of retired U.S. Army SFC Eli Guzman, both currently residing in Killeen, Fort Hood, Texas. They've come here to attend their first Las Vegas Veterans Day parade. Thank you very much. Wow, that's quite a wrap. Traveling behind them, we've got the Sunrise Mountain High School Marching Band. Now introducing the pride of the Mountain Marching Band from Sunrise Mountain High School in Las Vegas and playing tribute to our armed forces. Scouts of America, Pack 700. Pack 700 is a local Cub Scout unit sponsored, sponsored by St. Joseph, husband of Mary Roman Catholic Church. They're honored to march in the annual Las Vegas Veterans Day Parade in support of all veterans and to thank and recognize all veterans for the sacrifices and contributions they've made to help keep America free. Right behind them, we've got Pack 695. Scouting promises the great outdoors. As a scout ranging from kinder to fifth grade, they learn how to camp and hike without leaving a trace and how to take care of the land. Pack 695 also participates in community services in the Las Vegas area, and there are plenty of skills for the scouts to master and teach others what they have learned. Pack 695's mission is to prepare young scouts to make ethical and moral choices over their lifetimes by instilling them with values of the scout oath and law. That's important, not leaving a trace. You know, uh, uh, we, we don't exactly know what caused the uh, wildfires in California, but odds are it could have been campers. It's very, very important to learn not to leave anything. Looks like right behind them, this is actually Cub Scout and Boy Scout Troop 130. We've seen several Boy Scout troops making their way down. Of course, we had 695 prior to this, and now this is Troop 130. 130, on the go, like they said. Now, Casey, you said you were a Cub Scout, but not a Boy Scout. Of course, Cub Correct. Scouts up to fifth grade. Once you get older than that, you make your way to the Boy Scouts. Oh, you can step. I think there's a step in between called Weebelos. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Learning something every day. And here at the Desert Pines High School Marine Corps, JROTC, the Cadet Honor Guard are wearing the distinctive blue dress uniform, similar to the uniform worn yeah. by U.S. Marines around the globe. Desert Pines Cadets symbolize the very best of Desert Pines High School. MCJROTC and the Las Vegas community, Semper Fi. Two uncles that served in the Marines. My grandfather was in the Army. I've got a cousin that's in the Coast Guard, another cousin in the Air Force. Very proud to be here for Veterans Day yep. here in downtown Las Vegas. Me as well. Two uncles in the Marines. My father was in World War II in the Army. Uh, yeah, yeah. We, we learned the value of a military tradition in my family years and years ago. Yeah, my father would have loved this parade. He would have loved this.
Well, we've got the Boy Scouts of America Pack 148, and these guys are celebrating 40 years of scouting in the downtown area of Las Vegas. Their scouts are proud of the many community projects they have done and thank the community for their continued support. Ah, look at that. And right behind them, St. Vida Boy Scouts, Troop 143, and Pack 143, Boy Scouts from Troop 143, and of course the Pack 143 is the Cub Scouts. They represent St. Vida Catholic community, marching with their parents, their siblings, their families to show their thanks for the heroes of our country. Many of them do have family members who have made the brave sacrifice, and some may even be soldiers in their own right someday. Right behind them, we have got the CRI Counterterrorism Training School. Now, this is located in North Las Vegas and has been in operation for over 18 years. CRI is staffed by 99% veterans. They are also approved by the VA to accept GI Bill benefits for many of its courses. Now, CRI has also teamed up with 511 Tactical to bring free monthly situational awareness training to the public. CRI's course includes scuba dive master, aerial platform gunnery, tactical drone training. Check out CRITtraining.com. Right behind them, Robison Tactical Faith Family Firearms, their passion to provide effective gun training education to the entire community. The Clark High School Naval Junior ROTC is coming up. Clark High School's Naval Junior ROTC program was established in 1994. Very diverse group made up of almost 250 cadets has been an award-winning unit for the last 24 years years and as you can see them watch with such precision nice. it's very evident why they won those awards love the spats too nice touch strikes me the the, the awesome participation by all of these young people we've got so many members that are you know you can tell that we've got the boy scouts the cub scouts people in high school so of course all of their families came out to support them as well so we've got all them on this parade route cheering them on and waving to them as they pass by in high school that in, in my high school that was known as the color guards if you did the right. flags but of course right. color guard has a different meaning in reference to the military that's correct um, these are the first flags that we've seen make its way down all part of clark high school's marching band yeah the color guard um, dressed smartly two ways of course they look good and uh, they're wearing down vests <laughs> nice touch maybe we can borrow one of those clark high school has has a rich tradition of uh of performance arts not, not only music, but uh, not only uh, instrumental music, uh, vocal music, and theatrical arts. And here we have the Las Vegas Metro Police Department Explorers. 
Metro Police Explorers have teamed up with the City of Las Vegas Park Ambassadors and Deerfelt Veterans to show youth and senior inclusion. They work together to do great things for our community. I think it's a good time to take a short little break here. Brian, what do you think? Absolutely. Let's go ahead and we'll be right back with more from the 2018 Veterans Day Parade when we return. We are here to be a safe haven for women and children in crisis. We help women who are homeless for whatever reason. At full capacity, over 5,000 women and children come to the shade tree for services every year. Every day, the shade tree changes people's lives. Our group TAPS sends a professional in to perform the most meaningful and honoring part of the ceremony outside of the flag folding. It's just very, very much more personal when it's a live trumpet player. Real people playing beautiful, pure tones is amazing. It felt very, very special to have that there live. That is America saying thank you. Las Vegas isn't just a city where we work, it's the community where we live. And at Cox Communications, we know that giving back to our community makes Southern Nevada stronger. That's why our Cox Charities Las Vegas initiative is committed to awarding hundreds of thousands of dollars in grants to local nonprofits each year. We're proud to be a part of the fabric of this community. Together, we're making Las Vegas a better place to live. For more information or to apply for the next grant cycle, please visit coxcharitieslv.com. We're Imagine Dragons. I'm Tom Coughlin. And we're Joe and Jill Biden. Every day, 43 children are diagnosed with cancer in the United States. This leaves a devastating emotional and financial impact on the entire family. It takes a band. It takes a team. It takes a community. It takes a nation to tackle pediatric cancer. Join the Tyler Robinson Foundation, the Biden Cancer Initiative, and the Tom Coughlin J Fund in supporting the many families tackling childhood cancer. And welcome back to downtown Las Vegas. I'm Brian Chan with Vegas PBS's Casey Smith. Casey, we're about, I don't know, three-fourths of the way through the parade, and it has been amazing. And the crowd just keeps getting bigger. Spectacular event. People have come far and wide just to attend our parade, of course. They're out here waving flags, waving to the people participating. Gotcha. We've had horses, we've had motorcycles, marching bands, Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, and it just keeps getting bigger and better as we continue. And it looks like coming down the parade route, we've got the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. They've, they've been servicing Southern Nevada since 1931, starting with construction of the Hoover Dam. Mm -hmm. uh, IBEW yep. would like to thank everyone for their support and also to thank all the veterans for their sacrifice. Yeah, the IBEW has roots in Southern Nevada, no doubt, no doubt. Of course, back then it was Boulder Dam <laughs> when they were working on it. And there it looks we like go. we've got some Cub Scouts. We've seen yeah. several Cub Scout troops walk through, as well as Boy Scouts and a couple of Girl Scouts. But this is Pack 848. They've been servicing the community for over 30 years, and they're based out of Community Lutheran Church on Tropic Canada. Their Cub Scouts range from kindergarten through fifth grade and are led by a veteran. There we go. Here's the Nevada Veterans and Military Families Democratic Caucus, the Clark County Veterans and Military Family Democratic Caucus, proud to support legislation, organizations, and officials who work to improve the lives of our honored veterans. And it looks like making their way down the parade route, Palo Verde, JROTC. 250 cadets have come out today to honor Americans' veterans and say thank you for all of their sacrifices on our behalf. Welcome, Palo Verde. Ah, the Panthers. This is all part of the 250 cadets representing the Palo Verde Junior OTC.
Here we go. Boy Scouts of America, the Cub Scouts version, pack 218. They're from Southern Highlands area. As a pack, they've traveled to San Diego to board and camp on the USS Midway. That must have been a blast. They collected thousands of food items as donations for the homeless. And they actually go to veterans' homes and sing Christmas carols to them. <laughs> they, they do it all. You know, the Cub Scouts and the Boy Scouts, the Girl Scouts, they do so much more than just their badges and yeah. sell cookies and whatnot. They really participate in the community. They do a lot of service for the community. And it's just a great way to teach your kid leadership skills. Exactly, exactly. They, they learn that uh, they're not the only ones that matter, that everyone else in the community that matters. And they, oftentimes, uh, Scouts grow up to be the leaders of America. Looks like they're having fun. Here comes the Centennial High School Navy Junior ROTC. They're from Centennial High School, of course, nationally ranked as the number three Navy Junior ROTC program out of 614 Navy programs across the country. They're ranked number one in the state of Nevada. They have over 300 cadets proud to perform for you today. And they do look quite sharp coming down the street, don't they? Now, Casey, since you're familiar with this and you've trained and choreographed, what, it, what do you think is the hardest part? Getting everybody in sync? Teaching the choreography? What? You know, there, there's a lot of phases to it, but the, the what we call military bearing uh, is probably the hardest. It's standing up and keeping your shoulders back and standing up straight and looking proud at all times, especially when you get tired. You know, these braids are quite long. And, and you can see, you can, you can tell the well-trained groups from the highly trained groups in this sure. parade. And clearly, this group has, has national credentials, and, and you can see the military bearing coming through as, as, they, uh, as they walk down the street here, march down the street, excuse me. Now, I imagine it's harder for someone, obviously, carrying a flag versus someone that's not, or twirling the rifle or mm -hmm. the flag. Um, do you Rifles are the hardest. Okay, I Rifles would imagine. Are the hardest. I mean, the, the precision of those things to get the court, I mean, not only to throw it and catch it, but also just to throw it in sync with everybody else. And not hit yourself. And, and, I'm, and I'm not trying to be humorous about that. A lot of people who uh, practice long and hard with those rifles have a tendency to uh, uh, learn the hard way. Yeah, I would imagine. See the, the stature that they have. You can just tell they're a very proud group there. Just very proud. Determination on their faces. Here comes Las Vegas Pac-50. They serve boys and girls ages 6 to 21. They have several parents and family members in the military. They hold veterans very close to their hearts. Some more kids as part of the parade room. Always yeah. great to see. And behind them, we've got the Race to Erase 22. Now, every day in America, at least 22 of our military are killed by suicide. This group is carrying the names and photos of warriors who brought the battle home with them and unfortunately did not survive. 22 is not just a number. It represents sons, daughters, fathers, mothers, family, and friends who are no longer with us. Tony Scott and his Scott Racing Team, in partnership with Race to Erase 22, provide recreational dirt therapy through off-road racing and other off-road activities. Here comes Chaparral High School ROTC. Chaparral High School Navy Junior Reserve Officer Training Corps has cadet corps, excuse me, of 205 cadets. The program in its 25th year at Chaparral. Home of the Cowboys. Casey, we're basically seeing representation from every high school here in Las Vegas, which is great. Them. Yeah, a lot of them. And, and a lot of them, some of the older high schools, very steeped in tradition. Once again, this is the 25th year the Chaparral's been churning out a highly skilled group of uh, ROTC members. I mean, you know the instructors are doing something right when you can attract this many kids, this yeah. many individuals. And right behind them, Cub Scout Pack 219 from Spring Mountain District, the Las Vegas Boy Scouts. These boys and girls, kindergarten through fifth grade, honored to be marching in for the sixth year in the Veterans Day Parade. 
A lot of these kids were excited. You wonder how much sleep they got last night thinking about marching in the parade. <laughs> you know, they get to see thousands of people along the street. They get to be on television. Yeah, they got spirit. There is a girl in that pack. Look at that. Yeah, there's boys and girls. She's marching proudly with them. That's one thing about being a kid, Casey. You know, you don't need a lot of sleep when you're that young. <laughs> That's true. And right behind them, we've got Chase Bank, the J.P. Morgan Chase Office of Military and Veterans Affairs, established in 2011, drives firm-wide veteran-focused efforts around employment, small business, and development. J.P. Morgan Chase has hired over 13,000 veterans across all lines of business since 2011 and has a $4.2 million investment to support veteran-owned small businesses through access to capital and education. You know, they come out of the military with such high degree of skills in some respects, and uh, it, it's a perfect uh, marriage with Chase. They, they, if they can support and, and get some, uh, some of these veterans getting small businesses going, it enriches not only the community and the veterans, but it, it's good business for the bank, too. Yeah. And we've got the Laborers Union, Local 872. This is one of our most progressive unions in America. Laborers fight for opportunities for workers that affect our daily lives, such as creating jobs with livable wages, benefits, and safe job sites. Laborers build everything from mega resorts to tunnels and make buildings safe by removing hazardous materials like asbestos and lead. And today, the members of Laborers Local 872 are marching together in support of all men and women in the armed forces who have and are serving our country. Boy, I tell you what, those dogs got a lot of screen time. Do you notice how all three of them went right up to the camera? They know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I love dogs. Well, listen, it's the Raider Nation, and they're making their way down. Of course, Las Vegas ready to take on its third professional sports team here within the next couple of years. The Raiders couldn't be here today. But unfortunately, that's all right. We've got the Raider Nation fire truck representing. What have they got to do today that's that's more important than this parade? Oh, there's a game. <laughs> okay, the Raiders. They've made a very big donation recently to Veterans Village. So thank you, Raiders. And we are yes. looking forward to having you guys here joining our Las Vegas family. Veterans Village, one of the, one of the miracles of Southern Nevada right now, doing all the right things. And uh, yeah, and we do. We thank the Raiders. We thank everyone else who's involved in that, that fine organization because they really are helping out. Here's Bank of America, MSAG, Military Support and Assistance Group is what that means. They're dedicated to providing a network of military and military spouse diverse talent across B of A. They provide, they pride themselves, that is, on the work and volunteerism they do in our community. And they're excited. They, they, <laughs> they, they came to play here. That might not be the biggest contingency to walk down this road, but they certainly have the gumption and They've the energy. They've got the spirit. Yep. You better believe it. Next, we've got Community Heroes of Las Vegas with Studio 305, home of the Raleigh Project. Now, Studio 305 is the only nonprofit dance studio in Las Vegas, providing opportunities of all ages to reach above greater expectations. They've partnered with Las Vegas Shorewood Real Estate and First Option Mortgage to proudly introduce a unique program that gives back to our local heroes. Community Heroes of Las Vegas offers real estate rewards that you've earned. Military, veterans, police, firefighters, first responders, medical professionals, educators, and immediate family who qualify receive this closing reward when they buy or sell a home. So, Casey, we've got a special treat. It looks like that dance troupe from the Raleigh Project is going to make its way down and perform for out. Here they come. There we go. We can hear people in the crowd cheering for them as they come by. Again, it's important to note, this is the only nonprofit dance studio located in Las Vegas. Here come the Nevada Sons and Daughters of Aaron. Okay, here we go. The Sons and Daughters of Aaron nonprofit organization also open to anyone with an interest in promoting Irish culture. And I say that because I, I am Irish, enjoying camaraderie and serving those less fortunate in our community. The club started in 1966 right here in Las Vegas by a group of 15 Irishmen who banded together to celebrate their Irish heritage, have some fun, serve the local community through their good deeds. Joining them today, Irish dancers from, oh boy, here we go, Skoil Rintz na Radia School. I probably butchered that. I think, listen, you did a lot better than I would. I don't know if you caught that in the monitor, but we've got a Dalmatian wearing a kilt. <laughs> there we go. Here's 
here comes some Irish river dancing. Now, these I was guys, just going to say, you, you, your, your background is steeped in the arts. Explain this a little bit. Well, <laughs> I, I came to Las Vegas to actually sing and headline for the Chippendales. I did that for nine years, but I didn't do That's anything art, like that. Isn't it? Anything like that. And it, now, considering the fact that these guys have been walking this entire parade route doing those dances, I mean, their calves must be killing oh, them. No kidding, yeah. Because this is a long parade. This, this just isn't two or three plots. <laughs> yeah, they're working hard. They're holding up well. And we've got CSAA's Military Appreciation Group, who have been proudly participating in the Las Vegas Veterans Parade for the last three years. CSAA's Military Appreciation Group, Appreciation Group is made up of veterans and civilians alike, sharing one goal, to give back to those who gave their all. CSAA, a community that cares. I tell you what, Casey, when, you know, you don't think about it, but when you're stranded on the side of the road with a flat tire and you call that AAA, the sight oh, of that yellow truck yeah. oh, means yeah. everything. Yeah, it's, uh, they, they do a very important service. <laughs> you know, out of sight, out of mind, but boy, when you need them, you need them quick. The Knights of Columbus. They were founded in New Haven, Connecticut in 1882. And it's grown to the largest Catholic layman organization in the entire world, Nearly two, men, uh, two million members around the world and 15,000 councils. Now, during World War I, the order established soldiers' welfare centers in the United States and abroad with the slogan, everyone welcome, everything free. And boy, back in those days, as is today, that was very, very welcome. The centers became recreation slash service centers for doughboys, regardless of race or religion, providing basic amenities and religious services. Ladies and gentlemen, the Knights of Columbus. We had a question from the audience. What's a doughboy? A doughboy uh, was a, uh, a, an army personnel in World War I. They called them doughboys. Yeah. It's not the Pillsbury, Pillsbury doughboy, no. No, unli unlike the, uh, <laughs> the fat doughy critter, the, the doughboys were, were very svelte, trim, uh, fighting machines, fighting machines. Boy, there's some old vehicles, huh? That's a trolley car, and of course, I would know that because I was born and raised in San Francisco. Good 49ers fan, I hope. Uh, yes, every Sunday, yeah. And it looks like USO Las Vegas is making their way down. The USO strengthens America's military service members by keeping them connected to family, home, and country throughout their service to the nation. USO Las Vegas serves over 90,000 active duty guard, reservists, and their families each year. Well done. Yeah, the USO helping military personnel forever, forever. Here we go, Southwest Truck Driver Training, Inc. 1999, Gary P. Williams unlocked the doors to Southwest Truck Driver Training for the first time with just a handful of family members and friends. Since then, Southwest has grown to include campuses in Tucson, Phoenix, North Las Vegas. Southwest offers day, evening, and weekend classes and provides lifetime job placement assistance to its graduates, making Southwest Truck Driver Training a true school-to-work program. Obviously, they, they, uh, they support veterans' organizations, too. A lot of veterans have come out and driven truck while they, while they acclimate back into, uh, once again, civilian life. And, uh, good, good way to make a living. And certainly no stranger to the community. We've got the Salvation Army making their way down. And since 1865, the Salvation Army serves individuals in need all over the world without discrimination or judgment. Salvation Army gives a hand up, not a hand out. Now, since 2009, the Salvation Army Veteran Services serves over 2,000 homeless veterans and their families per year. And they provide transitional housing, supportive services, and temporary financial assistance to veterans transitioning from homelessness. Okay, the International Union of Operating Engineers is coming up. Local 501 actively been involved in Veterans Affairs since its inception. Many of the engineers were called to service during World War II. They helped build military bases, airfields, as well as other infrastructures. Their members would go on to serve in Korea, Vietnam, as well as our present day conflicts. Their engineers work daily to improve this great country and will never forget the sacrifices made by our veterans. The IUOE Local 501 honors the past while helping shape the future. And 
Brian, as you can hear, we started this parade with some motorcycles. And we're about to close it out with some motorcycles. I think right behind these guys, we've got the Forgotten Not Gone presents Veteran Trike Brigade. <laughs> Stomping out veteran suicide is their mission. Yeah. Now, the use of the trikes that you see right now are provided free of charge for our veterans by Forgotten Not Gone with your kind donations. Now, they ask that you please help them continue to stomp out veteran suicide by funding their mission of hope. Amen. Amen. GoneNotForgotten.org. Now, if you'd like to make a donation or become a member of Veteran Trike Brigade, again, the website ForgottenNotGone.org. You know, you got to have some strong legs. Pedal those trikes all the way through this parade route, I guess. <laughs> well, if I had the choice between marching or doing the trike, I definitely would take the trike. Yeah, probably. I guess you're right. Marching isn't too bad. Let's get behind some horses. <laughs> Hey, we want to point out that Humana is a platinum sponsor of the parade and has been a supporter of the Las Vegas Day, the Las Vegas Veterans Day Parade for 10 years. Humana supports veterans programs in the community and hires veterans, and we want to thank Humana for that. Okay. Hey, we do want to mention that Humana is a platinum sponsor of the parade and has been a supporter of the Las Vegas Veterans Day Parade for 10 years. Humana supports veterans programs in the community and hires veterans, and we do thank them for that. Humana stands for veterans. And it looks like our final entry of the 2018 Veterans Day Parade is Medic West. Now this ambulance, who has proudly been serving the community for the past 18 years, has several paramedics, emergency medical technicians, and support staff that represent all branches of the armed forces. They treasure our veterans, past, present, and future, for the dedication and sacrifices they have made and continue to make. Well, that is it. You know, it's a chilly day but it's been very heartwarming to see all of the participants of the parade, all of the spectators yeah. of the parade, everyone who's come out to honor America's veterans. Well, Casey, I gotta tell you, what a great way to spend the weekend. Veterans Day landed on the 11th, the parade landed on the 11th here in downtown Las Vegas. Brian Chan along with Vegas PBS's Casey Smith, thank you for joining us and have a great Veterans Day. See you later. Las Vegas isn't just a city where we work, it's the community where we live. And at Cox Communications, we know that giving back to our community makes Southern Nevada stronger. That's why our Cox Charities Las Vegas initiative is committed to awarding hundreds of thousands of dollars in grants to local nonprofits each year. We're proud to be a part of the fabric of this community. Together, we're making Las Vegas a better place to live. For more information or to apply for the next grant cycle, please visit coxcharitieslv.com.